Hello, it's Tamara Hunter, and today is day number 125 of 365 days of awesome celebrate success through service. And I have a true hero with me. I have a service hero that has also served our military and by the name of Heidi um, Gabriella. Uh, I love her name. It's like she has two first names as, as her full name, Heidi Gabri Gabriella. And I want to welcome you, Heidi. And I just want to say a few things before we start talking about why it is that you are today's service hero. Yes, I mentioned that you um, have been in the military, but when you were in the military, you got some life changing news that most of us uh, do not get. And, and the combination of getting it and being in the military and then what you did with that news in my book create you are the example of what a true service hero is all about so i want to welcome you and then we're going to talk and we're going to tell them all about your story okay heidi <laughs> well thank you for that amazing introduction here i'm gonna start crying already <laughs> um well i'm i'm actually honored and humbled that i am invited um, to be part of this and to inspire other people. But um, when I was um, in the service, I was in the United States Navy and I was 19 years old. And um, I just got a random um, message saying, hey, you have to go and you have to get a regular chest x-ray. I had no symptoms. I had, I was fine. I was fit. Um, and I was doing well. So there was, I was like, okay, just another, you know, random, you know, medical that I have yeah, to go to. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Put I, it on the calendar. Go do it. Be done. Right. Exactly. <laughs> For some reason, we're not hearing you right now. We're going to let. We're going to let this figure out. We're going to figure out what's happening. Let me, I'm going to take you down into the other line and then bring you back up. Let's see if that read, that gets us to, uh, she's coming back up. Okay. We're not hearing you. Let's, uh, you know, let me see if I can do something here. You know what? Okay, while she comes, she's probably going out of the application and then coming back. I want to I wanna recognize those people that are here uh, with us. We have Leilani, my sister, and okay, she's back. Let's, uh, let's bring her up onto the line. Oh, that's good. We can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Um, so okay, okay, so we were just, I was just recognizing a few people that have come to say hello. We've got one, we actually, let me explain something because these both of these people are, are pretty cool. And um, Dimples is one of our uh, uh, chemo buddies for life that we are going to be highlighting at our upcoming fundraiser in November. We're going to be flying her into Vegas. We're going to be doing it there. She will be highlighted. And we have Leilani, who is one of the volunteers that's helping to make that happen. So it's just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to... I'm going to recognize them both. Okay, so let me get your your name back here. Okay, so so you were saying that you got a you got the you know just a standard you need to come in and get a check chest X ray. So what happened from there? Um, and then from there, um, I did a, I did the X ray, and then about a week or so later, you get the next appointment, and my officer, the medical officer, was just like, "You need to come in now," and I was just like kind of okay this is weird while well, he's calling me personally that I need to go in um, sooner than my actual my appointment and what ended up he ended up telling me that there is a tumor behind my chest so the tumor was um, on my right chest wall be between my lungs and my ribs um, and it was about the size of a you know grapefruit it was pretty big already and they weren't sure what it was or what it could be so they had to do so many tests on me and then by the time they figure out the diagnosis it was like maybe a month or two later i don't i don't know but it, it didn't happen fast it went but i felt fine during that phase during that time and um I was very, very blessed um, to actually know the officer who diagnosed me because that officer um, got me into the research hospital at NIH 
and, and they deal with rare cancers. Um, the medical doctor, they were just like, well, my circumstances is that I have about three months to live and there's basically nothing they could do for me. So I got accepted to the research hospital and there, that's when just my life changed. I mean, that's when they were just like, this is serious. We need to start now. Um, they did tests, apheresis, all different pokes and needles and all that other stuff. But the good thing that was giving me hope is that it was just still only one tumor. For as large as it was, it wasn't, it didn't spread. Um, so that brought me a lot of hope. So I was just like, okay. Now, I got the news I had cancer. That was, that was very hard to deal with, but there's hope. It's still just in one location. They could, it could shrink. They could take care of it. And that was me as being a military kid. I'm on a mission. What's, you know, let me get my cycles. They gave me 14 cycles, chemo, surgery, and what I need to do. And I followed it. And every day, I mean, I just... You know, it was very, it was hard. I'm not going to say it was easy, but I always find joy in between the chaos and whenever I can. And during that time, it was really hard. So I was in the middle, I was in DC and my family was in Florida. So I was dealing with all of this myself. There was, there was only military support and the people that I met there were basically my family. So whenever you can, just don't be afraid to ask for help. There are right. so many wonderful people in this world that volunteer and spend their time there to be there for people like us who don't have support. So just don't be afraid to ask for help. There's nothing. I tell everybody that don't be afraid. <laughs> just well, you know, that goes along. That goes along beautifully, Heidi, with the message of the chemo buddies for life is that don't do it alone. Mm -hmm. Don't do it alone. You know, and and I, I want to clarify, you mentioned, OK, one tumor and you're saying, you know, the area it was a lung X-ray. Um, an x-ray of your lungs that it was found. What type of rare cancer was it that you were diagnosed with? So I was diagnosed, it's what it's called U-ring sarcoma. And I believe only 5% in this world gets that type of tumor. They're not, they don't know what it's caused from. It's not hereditary. No one in my family has ever had cancer. So the possibility it's, it was slim. No one had. Right, cancer. right. So... Um, just, it was just located on my right chest wall. So when I did have my surgery after my fifth cycle, they removed four of my ribs on my chest wall and they removed partial of my lung. So I have like half a lung right now mm -hmm. and, um, and my lymph nodes. So I was just pretty much disabled on my right arm and, I couldn't move. I had no movement. I couldn't open a door with my right arm. I couldn't, I could still write, but I wasn't able to lift or open a basic, you know, cabinet. Like I remember I, my mind would be like, Oh, go reach up with my right arm. And I'll be like, Oh, can't do that. I had to learn to use my left arm. So because even though that it's not working, your mind still thinks it's working. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's weird. So it took me a long time to, get back to not my normal self, but I would say to get the strength back and to build muscle. So I was about 25 years old when I finally started feeling better. I mean, I had even after the chemotherapy and once all was done, I mean, I still had, I still had um, hormone issues. I had thyroid issues. I had, you know, things that long term that nobody knew when it yeah. was going to go back normal was it ever going to no, doctors don't know because once you go through this it's it's a hardcore chemo so the long term effects yeah. there was no studies i also yeah. i also went back to do a long term long term study for them oh and, cool yeah yeah so i have a short term and a long term study somewhere in there um mm -hmm. nih and you know i went through menopause they said that I most likely will not be able to have kids. And, but what's so amazing is I have five beautiful children. Right, right, right. And I'm going to bring up the picture actually, because I, I, when you told me this Aww. and then, 
I love this. I, I, I found this and I'm like, okay, you know, because I was singing, we visited yesterday guys and, and <laughs> uh, yes, yes. We uh, actually, Heidi was referred to me by Sony Jackson out of Florida, who I am um, a part of a coalition with, uh, we are launching next month, the speakers pathway coalition. And, and she's like, Tamara, you got to visit with Heidi. And I had been traveling for a while. So it was like the first chance I had and, and we visited. And then the rest of the day, I kept singing in my mind because you kept saying it. Don't stop believing, you know, and, and I just was like, okay, I love this woman already because you know, everything about your story and who you are is like, just, just go for it. What you believe you can achieve. Absolutely. And yeah. And, and then I found this too, is that, you know, gratitude is the best attitude. Everything about you is just, you know, kind of like, okay, I'm there. I hear you. I'm going to do it. And I love when you were sharing the story of, okay, you know, you took it in that military mindset, like, okay, what do I need to do? What are my steps? What is my mission? Mm -hmm. And, and you did it. Mm -hmm. And yet it didn't. And I want to point this out too, because a lot of the chemo buddies and a lot of people that support, you know, because chemo buddies are not just those that are going through cancer, but it's those people that love and support them also. And, and you don't always quite understand when someone has, and I talk to a lot of people about this, when you're going through these hard chemical treatments, if that's what route you choose, that yes, many of us are surviving, but we don't completely know what we're going to be facing when we get, you know, on that other side of that treatment. And many call it the new normal. Many call it other things, you know, like phase one of, uh, you know, and then phase two, you know, because mm -hmm. yes, things can, many will go back to somewhere close to what they were. But I don't know that we, anybody in life, whenever they go through anything significant, it doesn't have to be chemical medicine. It can be, you know, anything in life that, that, that causes you to change the course of your life in one way or another. I don't know many people that end up being the same before Absolutely. that change, right? Right. I totally agree. You change as a person, you change your, you change from your heart you change, you have a different perspective and how you look at life. You appreciate life a lot more. But what's so interesting is that what I remember is that I change and I love life, but you also have to remember the people around you were not affected the same way and they're not going to have the same perspective. So it's like, I know that I, after the chemo, I was just like, oh, like the flowers, just the air, the sky, just being out and looking at the ocean it's like i love it compared <laughs> to being in the hospital room you don't appreciate what you have until you're like rock bottom and then you're like the yeah. most simplest thing in the whole wide world it's like oh well i didn't notice this before this is so amazing and you're I, almost like crying like oh, <laughs> you know it's like the, the littlest things are so beautiful um and yeah it's hard to explain that to someone when they're like well they're kind of negative negative you know it's, it's just like ah, okay well i'm gonna love my life anyways you know it's but yeah you grow and you change and you just become a, just a, a whole different being and sometimes you will lose friends and you know and sometimes you, yeah. things will change because you just want to be different you want to do different things and you just just overall become sometimes just a whole different human being. I feel like I completely changed to the person I was before chemotherapy. Um, I want to talk about that because, you know, um, that was one of the things that I really found that I really appreciated you um, opening up so much to me yesterday when you did. Um, I want to also, before we go there, I want to show a picture. I think it's beautiful. This must be your other half of <laughs> in creating those five beautiful children. And and but you had mentioned and because 
I get asked so many questions almost on a daily basis from different chemo buddies and, and their support people um, about, you know, what can I expect here? What about that? You know, and and this is a very rare cancer that you experience. This is not a normal surgery or treatment that you went through. And when you mentioned something, I was like, oh my gosh. And when I went and um, saw the picture or something, and there's no flipping way. <laughs> there's no way. I don't see anything. But you were sharing that you have, when you had your surgery, it left uh, it left an issue and that, that was taken care of, right? Yes. Yeah. Can you explain that to us? Wait, wait, the issue of meaning that they took, you know, you, you explained that they took the, the ribs, they took a part oh, yeah. of your lungs, you know, they took the tumor away, but that leaves basically like an indent, right? Oh yeah. So, um, so because they took so much out, they would have, there would have been an indent in there. So I actually have a prosthetic, um, on the side of my chest wall. But um, what's left behind is that they couldn't do is actually the back of my ribs where I actually have my um, scapula. It's on the top rib, but underneath is completely empty. So my scapula falls in. There's no stability. Um, so that I, I really had to work on and getting strength. So I had to rebuild. And the, they went through the muscles because they went through the back. They tore they said they dislocated my shoulder blade. They ripped through the muscles and went through the muscles, cut the ribs out through the front and the back. So they cut the lungs. So everything's in here, but they just, for some reason, the prosthetic only goes halfway. So it's like unstable. I, I don't, I don't know why they did that. And, um, but so you worked out, right? You I, took, yeah, you I, took I, control and you took that military I, attitude and, Yes. You have become an Iron Man, Iron Woman, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? I did. I did. I started off with I started off with yoga, fitness classes, and I started meeting up with friends and they you know, they were just like, "Let's do let's start with a 5k." And my 5k went to and I never thought I would run again. I mean, with a half a lung, I it's really it I wouldn't say it's hard. I would say I have to w put more effort into breathing and running and, and be more aware of my breathing mm -hmm. um, to function correctly, I guess you could say to have the right um, heart heart rate. But um, right. that's all that's all like, that's know, the mechanics of it. The but, mechanics, the athlete, but, yeah. but your emotional being and that attitude of gratitude and back to even that, okay, I, I see life in such a different way now because of everything I've been through. Isn't it when you've been through that, that, that those mechanical issues are just the what, you know, what do I need to do about it? But it's not the why it's not the, I am my determination. I am grateful for my life. So this is what I'm going to do. I just have to figure out how to do it. Right. Yes, You have to be your own motivator. I mean, there is nobody else who could motivate me to want to go do something like I couldn't imagine just being, I wouldn't say just, you know, I didn't want to have, I'm a cancer survivor. I wanted to say, listen, I was a cancer survivor, but I've also done this and I yeah. created this and I've done right. an Iron Man and I've done all these <laughs> achievements and nothing could hold me back. And there's, yeah, so yeah. Like, let's just put it here. You know, they said I couldn't have kids. I have five of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I have half a long. I'm an iron person. I'm an iron man, you know, and so there's no stopping you. And and so I, I want to continue now in in that you have gone on. I, I just love your energy, your way of looking at life. And it's like, OK, you don't let life kind of like sit on the shelf, do you? I do. No, and in fact, I'm just, I'm kind of behind in everything. We've got Ter Teresa Snyder, who I don't know if you know her, but if you don't, you want to, I mean, this woman is a ball of energy also, and I can just see you guys just having a blast. And we've got Saeed, Saeed, good, hi. He's a, one of our international um, ambassadors from Pakistan. And um, he just uh, really out there helping us to get the word out there, don't do cancer alone. 
Um, unfortunately, he lost his aunt not long ago, and our heart still goes out to you, Saeed. I know that you are just doing, the, you know, out there with the good fight and not giving up, and in her honor, you continue. And then we've got David uh, Jones in the house. He's one of our service heroes. He's doing some amazing things in green energy and helping us to clean up our environment out of California. want to welcome everybody to the show. and and just go back to what we're talking about here with you, Heidi, in that you don't let things dust settle. You just don't. And I love it. And so now you went on uh, to get your certificate or license. Uh, you got the education to become yeah. a coach, a life coach. Yeah. And you are helping people to um, you're speaking and you're helping people to find what it is that they want to do in life. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what your current mission is? Oh, thank you. Well, my my hope is to encourage people to be better, do better, become better. Um, I know that there's people out there who struggle with everyday lives and just getting them to focus and be who they really want to be. There's a lot of, you know, what really got me into this is when I started my first business is that I noticed that there was a lot of people who didn't believe in themselves and I believe in them more than they believe in themselves. Yeah. Um, and that's what made me really change. I said, you know what? I think I'm going to change from this business. And I want to get into more of a personal business and help people overcome what they're going through or how to reach their goals or how to persevere to the next step or just believing that they could just dream, dream big, dream as big as you want to be, yeah. you know? And yeah, there, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's what I get from you. You, you like, okay, I'm going to have, I'm going to have a child. No, let's just do five. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah, I love it. You know, I'm going to go run a marathon or I'm going to just start running. Okay. Why not be an Ironman? And, and for anybody that doesn't understand what an Ironman is, it's a triathlete. You don't just run, you run, you cycle, you swim. So, and you do all of those three things back to back to back. And it's not just a few miles that you do any of this. It's a major feat. And so it's, you know, um, I just, uh, my hat's off to you on, on the way that you do it. So dream big and you don't just say it, you live it and you can, you can share by living it and leading by example. And, and that's huge when someone's a coach, you know, okay, coach, I'm in, you know, I'm in the game. And, and when they can say, okay, coach, you know, where I'm going through and you can say, Hey, you know, I know I've been there. Let's get yeah. this. Let, you've got this. Let's find a way to win. And you can actually do that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the, the message out there is that you're going to have to want to do it. It has to be a passion. It has to be a desire to grow, to dream big. And then you take the action steps. Now, you have that passion. Now, getting there there's going to be a bumps in the road, as you know, as anyone who's an entrepreneur, anyone who's going through college, you know, it's like, oh, you struggled in this class, you know, but the thing is, is that you still have it there in your heart. So just right. don't give up. Right. And just keep on going. And that's, that's my, my message is just to inspire other people, lead by example and help them get there. I love it. I love it because and, and to sum up everything about you, it, it just, I, I just absolutely adore everything you're doing and your message because, you know, to have faced, you're in the military, you're young, you're away from home, and you hear those three words that no one ever wants to hear, and too many are lately, and and you, you hear them in an environment that some would say, oh my gosh, you were in the military. How did you survive through the military medical community? And, you know, and you're out there saying, 
I'm so happy I heard it from this medical officer mm -hmm. and that I had the opportunity to be treated in this medical facility. And I was enrolled in clinic or medical trials or, you know, his they're they're keeping my stats and my history of mm -hmm. of how I got through this through the military. OK, right there, a lot of people would be saying wait a minute, you know, uh, you know, why didn't you go outside? But you're like, you know what? I did it. I had my mission. I worked my mission. I got to the other side. Then they start telling you, okay, most likely you can't, you can't, you know, and we hear those words and a lot of people, what do they do? They shut down, right? Yep. They shut yeah. Down. And you didn't, you're like, okay. <laughs> now, you know, I don't take words fully. I, I take it in as in like, okay, I, I appreciate it, but I'm there's always a way around something. I don't believe everything's a fact, what comes out. I believe that things change. We grow, things expand, knowledge just gets, you know, the, you get, there's, there's just so much expansion i mean so it's like when somebody tells me something but 30 years down the line they were like oh no that wasn't true i mean you know what you can't be 100 percent. you have to follow what's in your gut and what i did go. is mm -hmm. just okay i can't i can't now that's that's i not now but right i, I will that that is so important. And, and you know, if, if anybody can have a take home message on, and there's so many take home messages on everything you're sharing right now. And I can't even say thank you enough for spending time with me today. Yeah. Um, and with all of us, and I hope that everybody that's watching this, share it, share it, share it, especially the chemo buddies, anybody that's affected going through uh, diagnosis right now, anybody that's having a rough time going through treatment, Anybody that's starting to feel like they're giving up because they've heard those words and our medical community, I don't think they don't want to make us feel as though we cannot. But in some way, in the model that we live in here in the United States, maybe to protect us, maybe to protect whoever, not sure, but oftentimes they're going to tell us the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. And you know what, what we need to do as a, as a community of survivors and champions and, and buddies is to remind ourselves that that is only if we choose to believe that. Not that if it goes that way that it was our fault, but you know, it's not done until it's done. And and what your story um, and so many others that have faced things that are just so uniquely huge. And you were like, okay, not now, but that doesn't mean that I won't be in the future. And it took you, like you said, it took you a few years to get to this point. And then, but you worked it to get there. And then you, you know, and your day, like I totally get you because this is how I did it was, you know, some days I was just grateful to have a clean glass of water and a fresh, clean set of sheets and pajamas. And, mm -hmm. and that, you know, I was grateful for that and that I could use a straw to get it because I, I couldn't eat anything, but I could certainly drink that clean water. And I was grateful for it. And that was my day, you know, and, and I, then you go on and then to smell the flowers and to do that, that may be your day and you did it and you were grateful for it, but then you move on. And so it doesn't, it doesn't end up being that big, that fast, but messages, those steps, taking those steps to achieve that next thing. And what is it that you want, right? In life coaching, if you were to sum it up with someone and they were looking at stuff pretty big right now, we have quite a few that watch this show that are, are at that point. What would you say that, you know, for even the next day, the next week, the next month, what is it that they should be, that you would coach someone to, you know, simple steps? What would you say? Focus on the now. Focus, no. focus on today. Um, don't worry about the past of what happens, don't, it's not even important. What's, what's more important, it's you, 
right now in the moment and don't worry about the future. Mm -hmm. Um, it's good to set goals. Like, you know, you said, okay, these are the cycles, but let the doctors take care of that. Let them, Hey, don't even worry about where you're going to be receiving kind of just let them guide you. Cause from what I remember, that's what I did. I said, okay, this is it. And then I would go look at it. I would cross it off and be like, okay, cycle number four. Yes. You know, and, right. and, but I, every time when I did have chemo, I would, I remember just taking breaths and being there morning and just saying, everything's going to be just fine. And I would put on my headphones and I would listen to calming music and I will just allow it and just do mm -hmm. that. Just every, just going with the flow of what I had to do for that moment. Right. So, no That's, stress of the past. Don't worry about the future. Just live in the happen. moment. Be at the moment. And when you're with family, be at that moment and ha be, have joy with them. When you're have just whatever it is that you're doing, just, just enjoy it during the chemotherapy. Just don't, I, where if the emotions get to them, some people would be grumpy or angry. Yeah. Just, you know, it's, un, it's not under your control. It's no one's fault. Just allow it to, to just say, okay, it's, it's releasing out of me. Every time it, it would flow, chemo would flow through me. I'd be like, the, the cancer is flowing out of me. So <laughs> that, you know, and, and, and thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, and so how many years, not to date yourself, but how many, uh, roughly, let's just say roughly, how many years has it been now since you were diagnosed with that? Uh, it'll be on my 20th year uh, last month. So it's been 20 years. That is incredible. And you were given three months to live mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Yes. That's huge. And I'll That's never a huge, forget. <laughs> never, no. never give up, right? never give up because you just don't know and they don't know and you know there's so many factors involved and part of it is our our attitude i want to bring back i'm going to i'm going to bring this back up as we end is that you know gratitude is the best attitude and when we're grateful for our life and grateful for the moment don't you feel that that really helps us to be grateful you know to to keep going Absolutely. Um, I, I practice gratitude every day. That is just my, my, my thing. My fam, my husband does too. So what we, you tell each other what we're grateful for each other or thank you and appreciate that is like, that's one thing that me and him do every day. Cause we know that you, we know, you know, being cancer survivors and my husband's a type one diabetic that, huh? you know, together is that you know anything could happen at any moment so right right appreciate it. <clears throat> nothing nothing's ever guaranteed in this world mm -hmm. and that's the thing that i think that not everybody realizes and yet it is the, the it's universal that nothing is ever guaranteed except for we can be controlling our own attitude and that's the thing that if anything we can we can be in control of is is that what is in our hearts and in our minds can help to so we see each event through our heart and our minds and our eyes you know so um i want to just thank you for your time today i am so thrilled that sony and you know said Deborah, you've got to meet this amazing woman and you truly are amazing heidi i know that you are affecting so many people's lives and and with your message and and i i want to encourage as as we close day number 125 of 365 days of awesome celebrate success through service i want to thank you heidi gabriella for being the service hero that you are for being such an example of don't stop believing yeah. that you have the attitude of gratitude and that you do that on a daily basis with sharing that love and that appreciation with someone in your life that's so important mm -hmm. and i want to encourage people as as we close today that this is a great exercise i love it 
you know, if if all of us took a few moments at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, whatever works best in your schedule, and that we we look at what we're grateful for, don't you think that that will make a big, huge difference in our world? Huge. 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 There you go. Well, <laughs> I mean, there you go. I, I can't say much more because that is, it is huge. And, and you have lived a huge life thus far, and I can only imagine what you have in store. So welcome to the Service Hero Club, as, as um, our friend Tr Teresa Snyder calls it. <laughs> And um, to let everybody know that um, I'm going to start talking about it, we do have our first fundraiser that we will be doing, and it's going to probably be called the Service Hero Celebration in Las Vegas on Giving Tuesday, which is November the 27th. And uh, all the details are being finalized right now, and it will be a fundraiser for Chemo Buddies for Life so that we can do some pretty significant things that we need to be doing for our community that is growing on a national and international level. Because the mission is to see that no one faces cancer alone. And um, you, your story is just one that, that I think embodies everything of which both Service Heroes and Chemo Buddies for Life has been designed for. You are a living example of the very best of how we can get through both things, you know, that we can get through something so significant as cancer and that we can serve others. Absolutely. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you for everything. And uh, go out and make it a great day. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye, Heidi. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>